Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a saxophonist, producer, and writer who is a native of Gary, Indiana, and has taken jazz and gospel to the next level. He has performed with many artists to include Jennifer Hudson, Peter White, Marion Meadows, Kelly Price, the Clark Sisters, and the list goes on. Let's find out more about this amazing artist and welcome Mr. Reggie Foster Jr. to the show. Aloha, Reggie. How are Aloha, you? Aloha, Gwen. How are you? I am well. Thank you awesome. so awesome. much for uh, being here today. I know it's what, uh, like nine o'clock your time where you are in Gary, uh, Indiana? Yes, but no, yep. Nine the home five. of Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, the home of Michael. Yeah. Jackson Five. Yes, the Jackson Five. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. And Thank so let's let's me. let's get started. Let's get to talking. Okay. How did you get into the music industry? What made well, you want to play music? Well, my dad, my dad and his his uh his friends, they all were musicians. My dad was a sax player. And uh originally I wanted to play bass and drums and uh so I started playing drums but uh I wanted to impress my dad and get a lot of attention from my dad, so I started playing the sax. So that's how it started. My dad plays sax. I wanted to impress him and do what he did. So that's that's how it all started. And now, how old were you when you started? Oh, 15 years old. 15, 15 years old when I started when I started playing sax. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sax. Yeah. All right. Now, do you play any other instruments besides the sax or the drums. sax? That's it. I play drum. I play drums was my was actually my first instrument I played. Uh played that for a couple of years before I started playing sax. And so uh yeah, drums, little keys, little keys, just a little bit. Just enough to sit around in the uh, studio, you know, something like that. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, what type of music did you guys listen to in the household? Gospel. In the beginning, uh -huh. it was gospel. Gospel, then after a while, when I started here, my dad practiced uh, a lot. He, he was a David Sanborn fanatic. I mean, oh, my God. So, uh it was more so gospel, but then when I started practicing, it was definitely smooth jazz. And then my dad used to do a lot of tracks, so I used to listen to his music too. So gospel, uh, I would say more so David Sanborn and uh, and my dad. That's what I used to listen to. Coming what, up in the, go ahead. What's your favorite genre of music to listen to? As you know a musician, what? I know you play everything, right? Yeah. But what's your favorite? You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, Gospel would be, I would say, would be my favorite. You know, I, I I like to listen to it, you know, when I'm going to work and when I'm coming home, because it's like when you, when I wind down, when I'm winding down from uh, teaching all day, it's, oh, man, we just need something just to woosa. And so that would be what, I, you know, pretty much what I listen to. I really listen to a lot of other music when I'm preparing, if you want to okay. be honest. And so a lot, you know, a lot of people listen to it just to, you know, cause they liked it, but I, I I started listening to other music when I'm preparing for something. So that that's my my routine. You know, now, um, where did you uh did you go to like college to play? Did you play music in college? No, no, I just uh my dad used to get on me, and I'm gonna tell you the quick story too. Uh, I know you don't have a whole lot of time, but <laughs> my dad used to get on me about reading music, and um, I learned how to read just enough to to learn when I got to a point where I could hear and know how to uh play music, uh -huh. I quit I, I had quit man after a while. And uh it was crazy. And 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 I paid for it down the line. Ramsey Lewis gave me a call. Friends of mine were playing for Ramsey Lewis. I had an opportunity for, to play on the Urban Knights record. Wow. And, oh yeah, it was Maurice Fitzgerald, Calvin Rogers, those guys, they were, you know, they were trying to, you know, hook me up with this because they were looking for a sax player. So uh, I was gone all day. I was, you know, I was, uh, at this time I was, I had to be 19, maybe 19, 19 to 20 at this time. Um, Marsh Fitzgerald called me, he said, hey man, where you been at, man? I said, what you mean? He said, man, Ramsey Lewis is trying to call you. I said, really? I said, yeah. I didn't believe it at first. I thought he was just, just, you know, talking trash. Mm -hmm. So I finally got Ramsey Lewis. My mom said Ramsey Lewis was calling. And so I asked the phone, Ramsey Lewis, he asked me, he said, hey man, I want, want to see if you can work with us with the Urban Ice CD. And uh, so I said, man, I would love to. He said, what kind of jazz do you, or what kind of jazz do you listen to? So I played a couple of riffs from the Brecker Brothers and 
and uh, some Miles Davis stuff. Like he said, okay, but he said, so do you read? I said, oh, I saw. I just busted. I said, no, I don't read. He, he, now he got upset. Actually, really got upset. So he said, how do you expect to make it in this world if you can't read? And so I said, well, I said, well, I said I could play your music, Mr. Rap. Do I? I'm telling you, I could do it. So he he was thrown off about by that. So I never really got a chance. But my ear, God bless me with such an ear. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I, that that gets past me, you know. But you know, a lot of guys, they they some guys, they just want you to know how to read music because they want you to. Sometimes not even that right. it's, uh, it's needed. But you know, so those. Now, I- I like to always ask this of, of the artists that came that that come on my show because yeah. the pandemic really put a lot of people, you know, it threw us all for a loop, right? Especially the entertainment industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and of course the musicians. So yeah. during that time, what did you do to cope? How did you cope during that time? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was still playing. Really? Um, that's actually when I um I was blessed to uh, play with Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, um, I was still playing, doing certain things. I I did a lot of session work. Uh, A lot of people were calling me for session work. And and plus I was, I was still working. You know, Mm -hmm. I I was, I was a school teacher, so I was getting paid from that. So I was, I was still moving. I did not slow down. So it was actually a blessing for me. You want to be honest? Yes. Well, that is a blessing. That is a blessing. And a note to my uh, viewers, if you have not seen it, you need to go on YouTube and look up Jennifer Hudson and the 2020 uh, Democratic uh, National um, Convention, Convention, right? right. Um, you will see a beautiful, beautiful rendition of A Change is Going to Come with Jennifer Hudson singing and, of course, Mr. Reggie Foster Jr. in the background. And that looks like that was an amazing um area where you were playing because just the sound in that with her voice and the pianos and you playing yeah it was it was beautiful it was downtown chicago oh god i can't remember the video but it was so beautiful fred nelson um who was playing the other piano fred nelson was the one that connected me and brought me in on that uh he was uh before she passed aretha franklin's musical director and he was the one that that uh gave an opportunity to do it and from then you know she called me for a few other things it was you know it's been a blessing been right a blessing. so you you yeah. also played for um the late representative john lewis's uh, uh right Earl? yeah yeah yes. that was yeah yeah yes. that was the uh that was on cbs um tyler yes. perry and uh, uh oprah winfrey uh they had hosted that yeah so you've been doing it yeah i was like i said I was, I was pretty busy you know god had really blessed and uh like i said i didn't miss a beat and I did so much session work, uh, did so much session work, and and that was one of the things that really was a blessing to help me get you know get a lot of the work that I got. And uh, like I said, plus I was working as well. You know, you know I was doing virtual from home, and so mm-hmm. I I really you know I did well. God bless me. I was really I have no complaints about going through the pandemic. It was you know you know it wasn't a blessing that the pandemic happened, but you know what I mean. So but, yes. Yeah. What would you define as the most life-changing event so far in your career? Uh, you know, um, my my father, my father, my sister, my brother passed, and I I got something from each one of the deaths, and um, I love them all like crazy. But this last one, my father, it, it really changed my mindset and because my, me and my father had a couple conversations a little bit before he passed about handling the business and 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 changing my mindset about a lot of things and and just thinking about them just like wow i just really want to do what i need to do before you know my time comes but i just want to just be you know that was our conversation but those that those that that's one of the things that stuck with me one of the uh, life-changing things was my mindset and doing things different in my life and not just being a musician, but being a businessman. And, and that's what my mindset is to be a businessman and a great musician, you know, but without the business being taken care of, like you just being a musician, just a hobby to me, for me, anybody else, you know, but for me, it's just being a hobby without handling my business. That's been the drastic change for me. Wow. Yeah. 
Now, there are a lot of saxophonists out there. Oh, tons of and great You guys awesome are a dime a dozen. You guys are out there. I'm telling there. you. I'm telling you. I guess what I mean, sets you, though, Reggie, what huh? sets you apart from the other saxophonists? I want you to tell me what sets you apart from the others. Well, I would say what sets me I, I, I definitely, my music, I, I definitely do not want to sound like anyone else. Now, I, mm -hmm. I would say that I reached toward, I used to reach at David Sanborn because my dad forced that down my throat as I was a kid. But um, listen to my dad. My dad had a different tone from anybody. And, I, and so I really mimicked his style. He never had a sound like anyone else. And, and listen to other guys around me. And I, and I listen to other, you know, the, the other guys, the great saxophone players that are out there. I mean, so many other guys, but trying to, and I listened to Gerald Albright for one point in time. I had to stop listening to him because he is like one of the uh, most amazing, one of the most amazing sax players out there. As so him and Kurt Whalen, I had to stop listening to those guys. But I just started writing my own stuff and just kind of just, people always say, listen to a reference. I don't like listen to references anymore. I just want to just try to find my own way. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's what sets me apart. You know, I'm not, trying to see what's really going on, but I just, I want to create my own vibe. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of right. what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what sets me apart. That now, answers you, the question. Yes. You stated earlier, because one of my other questions is, do you have another job? You stated earlier, you are a school teacher. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're a music yeah. teacher. I know right. that you right. talk, right? Yeah. What, how do you balance that? Working full time, like I know, like I know you said earlier, you're tired. Being a full time music teacher with kids, right? It's, with all those it's kids all day. So hard. It's so and hard. And then you have to get ready to either you might be doing a show, or you yeah. might have to come home to the studio and and record. How do yeah. you do that? How do you do that? It's really hard. I'm not going to even lie to you. It's really hard. It's like, because the school is so demanding. The school, you know, because grading and, and uh, you know, you have meetings after school sometimes. And then sometimes I'm staying over. I, I do after school program as well. Mm. So it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. But I thank God for the, you know, strength that he gives me to do it. It's, it's, it's rough. But I enjoy it all, you know, because it's, I teach music at school, and then when I get off, I'm doing what I do. So I'm really enjoying it. You know, I ask God for it, so I'm not complaining. I right. ask him to get me busy. I want to be busy, and he gave. You know, he's doing it. You know, so but it's real. It's not an easy task. I mean, it's it's definitely not an easy task. That's why I, I welcome. I'm so glad summer is here. So I get <laughs> I get a little break. You get a little break, huh? I get a little break. Yeah. What is that about a two month break? no we go back august 1st oh wow august 1st yeah it's this oh my goodness yeah wow just a month and a couple of weeks yeah so maybe <laughs> you have played with a lot of artists yeah you, you collaborated with a lot of artists yeah who would be your dream collaboration oh wow David Sam, I'm, oh my God. Yeah, David Sambo would be, would be my, my dream. I've been watching him since I was a kid. You know, uh -huh. my dad, my dad forced, I mean, he, he, my dad told me who I could listen to or who I could not listen to. And I was just this one particular sax player and he was a gospel sax player. And, and I'm not gonna name his name, but my dad would not allow me to listen to this particular, he, he took the CD from me and told me I could not listen to him. Yes. What? Y yes, my dad, he was really, he was really serious about that. He did not allow me to listen to this particular sax player. So David Sanborn at that time was the man for my father. And that's okay. who I li that's who I had to listen to. So David Sanborn would be the guy. Next in line would be Gerald and Kurt Whalen. Those, those two right there are my okay. favorites. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into a little bit of your music. You right. you have an album out entitled Different uh, Level. Right. And then you have some singles out. You have Transformation, Lifted, and Chances right. Are. Right. 
Right. And chances are, is your latest single that's out. Right. What was the imp- inspiration behind that song? Chances are. You know what? I had got, um, I wouldn't say depressed, but I got kind of a little low because, you know, the way I wanted things to go um, with different levels and then go the way I, you know, that's the ignorance of me not understanding the business at that time. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of just backed off of music. And, and I actually was going to throw the sax away. A buddy of mine kept me from doing the call. He, he drove, I was living in Indianapolis at the time and a buddy of mine drove down and talked me out of jumping off the ledge with my saxophone. <laughs> but um, um, I don't know, you know, I, I've just, uh, uh, how would I say it? Uh, what I said, um, mm, lost my thought just that quick. I'm so sorry. That's a question. Okay. Yeah, I lost my thought. It's okay. You had a long day. You yeah, know, long you went day. to work and then you're you're coming here doing this interview. <laughs> oh, with long me. day, long and day. And I'm so happy that you were doing it. <laughs> it's a long day. You. I'm yeah. I'm so, I, yeah. I thank you. What was the question again? I'm sorry. I lost my thought. <laughs> I did. I lost my thought. I was heading to head somewhere and I lost my thought. Um, well, the question was, what was the inspiration behind the song? Oh, yeah. Um, so my guy, you know, uh, I'm back. <laughs> my guy <laughs> talked me off a ledge. And so I didn't think that I would be playing again. And um, so when I wrote the song uh, uh, with a buddy of mine, it started with a friend of mine named uh, Garrett Body. Uh, and then we didn't do anything with his version. So I took the melody and I uh, co-wrote with Multijewel. And it just, chances are that, you know, what are the chances of me getting back to doing this? I never thought I'd be playing music before. And uh, I mean, I was really, ah, but I made it back and chances are. That's, and you're here. And I'm here. So that's how I got to that, that point. And so you're here and I'm talking not going backwards me. again. Yeah. <laughs> Now, a question that I have, and I don't, I, I want, I always want to ask my artists this, and I always uh, run out of time, but you're yeah. the perfect one for this because okay. you are a music teacher. And um, I know I grew up playing music in the school. Yeah. Um, and right now there is a, a, a lot of funding has been taken away yeah. from the schools and yeah. for the arts and things like that. Right. What do you think about that? And what do you think can be done? What can we, what can we do? Because the arts are very important. Music is very important. Yeah. I think it, it, it to me with the parents and, and uh, because a lot of times seeing my boss and what goes on, you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's not really up to them. So, I, you know, but I think if the parents would push, because I hear a lot of kids say, we don't even need this. this is not really that important it's just music you know but i think if parents would would push and and say look we want music back up in the in the schools i think that would help it a lot i think that would help the situation a lot from what i've seen because you have some parents that think the music is cool and, and it's needed you have a lot of them that, that really does it you know mm-hmm. from what i see in in my area mm-hmm. but i think if the uh the parents and then and with us too the teachers as well you know we all just we, i mean it's needed i mean i hear a lot of kids a lot of kids they, they they they're sad about things but they i talk to them and they said they always talk about what what songs they listen to that lift them back up and that picks them back up even when they down i mean because these days and time these kids are really going through a lot yes. and and music is is a is a healing situation. Yeah. And a lot of people don't believe that, but music heals the soul. You know, you know, that's why it's such a a, a big thing in the church. You know, it this is one of the things that gets the preacher started. And when the preacher gets up, he takes it away. But music is a serious thing, and I think it could be a, a big healing for the kids in the community, you know. But like I said, we all it, it takes a village, it takes a village to do it. You know what I'm saying? We all have to get together and do it. You know, so right. I think that's what needs to be done. I think the parents and teachers, we all need to like do something and just say, hey, we need to put this back in. And that's why I'm glad that the school that I'm at, they're like, they're like really serious about music. And I'm really awesome. thankful for that because I wouldn't have a job. 
<laughs> I wouldn't have a job if they went. So, so. Awesome. Well, well, can you just give us just a little bit, just a little bit of something, something? You want to play us a little bit of something, something? Just a little you, something. Here, something. Just a little just something, 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 you know. <laughs> Imagine if I come see you in concert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we don't put you to sleep. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, Gwen. I appreciate it. Never. Where can people, well, before I ask you this question, sure. what advice would you give new artists coming into the industry? Because this industry is tough. Mm. We talk about this all the time. This industry is very tough. People think that this music industry is all glam and glitz. But when you go behind the scenes, yeah, it's it's, it's tough. I will tell anybody, yeah, yeah I, I will tell anybody, no matter what anybody says, keep pushing. Do not stop. Do not like it. May it, it's not going to always look good. It's not going to always be glamorous. But just keep pushing. Learn about the business. Do not just be a musician that just want to just play learn about the business because if you don't know about the business they're going to know about the business but you're going to be just playing the saxophone they're going to be making money so mm. learn about the business i mean keep pushing stay encouraged do not give up that's that's pretty much it you know learn the business stay encouraged and keep pushing that's that's what i can guarantee if you and, and study your craft do not think you're going to be top dog and not study your craft study yeah. your craft Study your craft. Do not just think you're going to be like playing because you did something in the studio. No, study your craft. Wow. You, yeah, you will make it. Now, where can we go to, to find out more about you? What projects do you have coming up? Anything coming up that we need? Anything? Yeah, I have, I have a few things coming up. Um, I have some more singles coming out, but um, I got something special that I'm working on. I can't say nothing about it now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't say nothing about it now, but I have some things um, that's special that I'm working on that I have uh, have the opportunity to be a part of, and it's kind of big for me. And uh, but right now, you know, iTunes, Spotify, Spotify, all those different different places you can go get the singles. Uh, chances are, Transformation, Lifted, you can go get those. But I do have some new music that's going to be coming out this year, and um, you're going to hear where it's going to be who's going to be a part of this it. it's going to be it's, it's, i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited for you just yeah. by listening to you, i'm excited i'm excited for you yeah where can the viewers go to find your music what's your website uh rfjmusicquest.com you can go uh the single transformations on there and you just go there you know learn about me my bio's on there you go learn about me and that's going to be changing up a little bit too you'll be seeing some changes on that too so that's where you go get that, yeah. All right. Well, I told you this 30 minutes was going to go fast, didn't I? Yeah, it went by actually really fast. <laughs> really fast. Wow. Well, I uh, thank you so much, Reggie, for uh, being here with thank me Thank you today. for having me. I enjoyed myself. I'm thank you. Thank forward, you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to what you have coming out for sure, because I'm yeah. going to be watching you. I'm definitely uh, going to be watching you for sure. Yep, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> to my viewers, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, aloha and God bless.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.